What is considered to be the second pillar of object-oriented programming is a concept known as inheritance. When we think about inheritance, we can take a look at how we relate to our parents and our grandparents. If we think about the color of our eyes and the color of our hair, perhaps our height and some of our mannerisms, a lot of people will say, oh, you have your mother's eyes or you have your father's temper. And these are examples of attributes or traits that you have inherited from your parents. Likewise, you can inherit some of those attributes and traits from your grandparents and then from your great-grandparents all the way up this hierarchy chain. Within object-oriented programming, we can do the same thing. We can create inheritance hierarchies of the classes that we have where a subclass becomes a sub or a child, if you will, of a parent class. And we can use our example of the animal class that we have here as a base class and again, this is the same functionality that we've been using in our classes throughout the course. And we can inherit this behavior and functionality in a child class or what we refer to as a subclass. Let's go ahead and create a new class in our project. And in this case, we're going to create a new class called dog. And when we add this to our application, we can see that we get the template for a class called dog. Now by itself, dog isn't doing anything and it has no functionality, no attributes built into it. But we want it to take on the traits and the characteristics of our animal class. And in order to do that, let's just use this colon separator and then we can specify the name of the class that we wish to inherit. And in this case, we're saying that dog inherits animal. And on purpose, I'm going to leave the dog class empty with no member variables and no methods in it at all. And I'm going to go into my program class, and I'm going to say dog spot equals new dog. And then if I say spot and I use the dot separator, we can see that I'm getting the age and the color and the make noise and the move attributes and behaviors, even though they weren't written in spots or in the dog class itself. So if I say dog.move, and we were to execute the application, we would see as the animal move method simply states that the animal had moved. So if we do a control F5, we see that it has actually moved. So what has taken place here is that I've said that my dog class inherits everything that my animal class has, and therefore I can use all of the attributes and the functionality in my animal class directly in my dog class simply by using this statement within C Sharp, dog inherits animal. That's a quick and simple example of inheritance within C Sharp. A dog class can inherit from animal or a dog class can inherit from any other class where it makes sense. And we'll see examples of how all of our classes within the .NET framework and C Sharp ultimately inherit from system.object a little bit later on.